Peace. This is Raheem, your investigator, reporter, and we're going to get right into it. The 12 Tribe Hebrew Chart is Not Authentic Part 3. This will be the final uh, video. Okay, um, we're basically going to deal with now Gad, North American, so called Indians, that's what you guys call them, and Judah, Negroes, African or Afro-Americans. Now, when we're dealing with how they look, culture, what they ate, how they dress, their linguistics, and so forth, there was a caller that called in after me and said that the uh, Mexicans didn't look like the Hebrew Israelites and so forth and basically Alazar shot that down. The caller was right because when archaeologists go in to deal with cranial evidence they reconstruct especially with the technology we have they can reconstruct how those people looked based off cranial evidence and if there's a full cranial they are able to do it with good measures now uh, in my other videos they use cranial evidence to show the Asians different from the, the dark people like the Olmec people or the Lucia uh, skull that they found in Corral, Peru, which dates older than Olmec people. And those people, they said, looked aboriginal, like the aborigines in Australia, which we all know they come from Africa. Broad nose, big curly hair, and uh, full lips, and so forth, and they're dark. Now when you look at, say, Sanofi Tustanigi, he looked like the people in India, him and his wife. You could tell by his straight hair. Here's more Seminole people. You can look at them. And if they was to mix with Caucasian Spaniards, they would look like the light-skinned Mexicans you see today. Seminole family of tribal elder in Cyprus. This was in 1916. This is how they looked. Now, mind you, in my video before this, those people were here 12, excuse me, 14,400 years ago. Okay? And then I showed you where they have evidence they've been here 12,000 years. So that adds up. Look at this man. Straight hair. Dark skin. Looks nothing like a uh, uh, Israelite. You see these people. Same thing. That's why Columbus called them Indians because he thought he was in India because the way they looked. Now these are Cheyenne natives. They look something like them but not quite like them but their hair is straight also also these these brothers but they're not Hebrew Israelites they don't look like them the culture is not like this the language is not so forth now these are Hebrew Israelites being taken into captivity by the Syrians look at their hair the way their hair is and their beard that's how they looked another picture in the British Museum. Again, their hair have the little knots in it with their beard. Taken by the uh, Assyrians. Okay? This is a Falasha Israelite. 
okay? That's how a real Israelite looks. That's how they really look. Now, as I've shown before, the people that left Asia and crossed over Alaska and came down, they were basically dark. The people that stayed in Alaska uh, morphed into light skin because of no melanin, no sunlight. Basically, you couldn't get vitamin D and they started morphing. The people that moved down kept coming down all the way to the tip of South America. They kept their melanin. Because the, this is basically tropical. But let's move on. The five so-called civilized tribes that they call them. Chickasaw, Choctaw, Creeks, Ch uh, Cherokee, Seminoles. They wore, they wore clothes similar to the white man and often became Christians. My thing is, why would they, the Caucasian people, have them to become Christians with a Bible if they are the people of Reuben and they would have already had the book? Okay? They would have already had the book. Let's go on. The Seminoles were farming people. Seminole women harvest crops of corn, beans, and squash. Seminole men did most of the hunting and fishing, catching game, such as deer, wild turkeys, rabbits, turtles, and alligators. Seminole Indian dishes included cornbread soup and stews. Rabbits, turtles, and alligators. They would have knew that that's forbidden. Here it is in Leviticus. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean to you. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 7, also. So they would have knew the law, you see. Now, the whole thing about that is when Jules Corvette, a French author, who wrote about the Berbers in America, he saw the ethnic names, 46 of 77, examined names of inland and coastal African Berber communities match American tribes. We all know the Berber people is Muslims or with the Moors. That's why I was trying to tell this brother. And he says, why are there such close associations between so-called African natives tribes and ancient American native tribes and language and in culture and all as well as physical appearance and genotype? Author of the of They Came Before Columbus, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima states in reference to Corvette's findings. And it says, these many identities and names are not simply the result of one migration of Arabs or Africans to America, nor in fact to one-way traffic of people and culture to the American continent. People, I advise you to get Ivan Van Sertima's book. And that means they didn't just come over here one time. They were coming back and forth. Okay? Back and forth. And they're talking about Arabs here. Okay, let's move on. Now you talk about Gad being North Americans. Okay. Northeastern Americans. Cool. Now, here we're in the Northeast. You have all these natives here. One of the biggest and known were the Wampanoag people, and they had sub-tribes. Okay, so 
when you say Gad is Indians of North Eastern, okay, Indian is an incorrect word to use, first of all, y'all should know that. Because they were natives, meaning they were born here. They were already here. That's another point I'm trying to get you to see. They're not Israelites. Israelites is all the way on the other continent. They didn't come over here like that. They probably came through slavery when, like y'all said, when they scattered amongst the nations. And if they scattered amongst nations, they had to they had to be people in Africa for them to scatter amongst. Everybody that came on that Judah boat, or 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 as you say, slavery, transatlantic slave trade, is not all Judah. All those people were not all Judah. You can forget that. And if you go, this is see, this is why I study. This is a Bible that the Caucasian Christians translated into Wampanoag. On the right side, you see it in English. On the left side, it's Wampanoag. From North Eastern America. That's how big those tribes that tribe was because they had to subdue them one way or another and to trick them this is how they tricked them colonists translated the bible into wampanoag and put certain tribes in the bible you heard that put certain tribes in the bible like the wampanoag or uh let's say wichita they just put them inside the bible that wasn't there in order to convert the, the natives. The Bible clearly states one is not to add or take out of the Bible, but the European Caucasian Christian colonists did just that, making the Bible tainted. Let's concentrate on that. But put certain tribes in the Bible. That's what you're doing with your chart. You can't put them inside the Bible because you don't have that type of authority. See, the Caucasian uh, Christian, they were making the books. They was revising the Bible. They had the printing presses. Y'all don't. This is what they did. In order to put, or in order to convert the natives. You see the word natives there? It doesn't say Indians. And that's what you're doing with your chart. But you're doing it in another way. And you don't have no DNA evidence or anything, okay? Now, this woman here, Joanne Tavarius, is reviving the language of the Wampanoag natives that were in America. She's going to use that Bible not to keep them on a religious uh, spectrum, but to use the language to get back. But she's going to scratch out the Christianity from it. Okay? And she's uh, of Wampanoag. So there you have it, people. This, this, is, this, is, this is it. So... The evidence is in front of you, and I hope people, if only one person sees this, it's good enough and they take heed. The chart is not authentic, and that's all I have to say. Peace.